Okay, hi, so I think we can start now. So my name is Lucio Cornejo. I am going to be the facilitator for this cohort. And this is, this is actually the fifth cohort. Uh, this seems to be quite a popular book. Um, and so before starting with the, with introductions of us that are in this meeting uh, and with the, the actual content of the book, uh, as a facilitator, I have to explain a little bit like how the how these book clubs work and how uh, and what is the outline for for this specific for this specific book club for that is for this cohort due to this book. So I'm going to be using the notes um, from the previous cohort. If you want to follow along, maybe I can send it via the chat. So we're going we're going to be covering the book Introduction to Statist Statistical Learning using R. Now let's go to the welcome sections. And about the club meetings, uh, it's not necessary that the people that join the book club, even the facilitator, have a good enough grasp, grasp of the material. So really it's up to any of us to present one of the chapters. It's okay if you didn't understand all of it. Uh, like just do it and perhaps in, in such exposition you actually get to understand a little bit better in the content of the of the actual chapter. Um, now and let's see to the next to the next part. Uh, we are we're going to be using the second edition of this book. Uh, it's actually quite different to the first one. There was quite a bit of material added. And um, about the pace, um, the book has, uh, for every chapter, there is also a section of exercises. So the meeting will be the first chapter, and then the next meeting will be the exercises of such chapter. However, and uh, this book is actually quite dense. Let's say, I think it's like, 600, page, 600 pages, so it will happen that sometimes we, sometimes once, uh, sometimes one doesn't get to, to cover the whole chapter in his meeting, and uh, perhaps the the person who had to, to, uh, how was it exponent in English, to present the meeting, uh, he or she will have to, to to com complement in the next meeting also or perhaps another person uh, the material that they were they weren't they couldn't they couldn't finish from the from the chapter last week uh, but still uh, we'll be doing chapters and exercises uh, and as it is mentioned sometimes there will be breaks this it's simply natural. Uh, let's see. It, uh, if you have already seen the book, for example, this over here, it's not only chapter sorry, chapters and exercises. There's actually for every chapter there's also a lab section. But from what I've gathered from reading the book and uh, of this book club, and they they never do those. So really, it's up to you if you want to do it uh, on your own. That will that will not be covered in in these meetings. Uh, now, for a couple of resources to to this book lab, you can actually find many of them in the actual Slack page. For example, if we open these links, first we get the the website uh, to this book. It's not only available the the actual book that we are going to be reading, but also solutions. Let's see, I think it's over here in resources. Solutions or, or notebooks related to the scripts and necessaries, and, sorry, the scripts covered in the actual book. Uh, besides that, you can find over here the notes. This, this has been notes uh, that have been getting uh, complemented from cohort to cohort. So 
if you have to present one time, uh, you can actually like just up, up, update these notes or if you want to simply read along them as I am doing now. It's really up to you. Uh, now, if you want to update that, uh, then you would have to submit a pull request. Sorry, right here. Uh, to be repository. So that, that's how you would be able you would be able to do it. And then for example in, in this other section, uh, this is a complement because along the book that we will be working with, uh, almost all of the graphics seem to be using only base R or very basic graphical libraries. But at, at least for R one of the one of its most popular graphical gra libraries is ggplot. So if you want to perform the graphics from the book uh, in uh, what, sorry, with tools from the Tidyverse, you can do it with, with this book, with, with the content from this book that is available over here. Now in this other link, there are solutions and also with this book, there is also an actually recorded video lectures of the chapters. And not only that, uh, the authors of the book have also, have also launched a, a MOOC. And you can find it on EDX. I don't remember the name exactly right now. But yeah, like there are many ways to follow along with the content of this so popular book. Um, and then, well, I will talk later on about presenting. Let's see. Now, that was basically the, the introduction. So uh, now actually, perhaps it would be even official, especially because we are so, so few people to, to introduce ourselves. Uh, you could mention uh, why are you interested in this book? And for example, what, what are you hoping to achieve from it? Uh, I, I will start. So as, as I said in the beginning, my name is Lucio. Uh, well, I am from Peru. It's a country in Latin America. Uh, uh, I study mathematics. I, I am still in college, but I, uh, I am interested in this book because I am working towards uh, migrating to a data science career, a data science work. So, I am very interested in machine learning, especially because it covers many topics from pure mathematics. So I want to, to delve a little bit more in that area. Uh, at least what I, am, what I am hoping to get from the book is a basic understanding of the machine learning algorithms because so far I have only worked with them in Python, but almost like copy and pasting code. So. I, I still don't really know what they are doing and they are still a black box to me. Uh, and yeah, that's about, that's about it about me. Uh, uh, someone else maybe who wants to present. So introduce yourself. Um, hi all, M my name is Derek. I am a data science uh, instructor at a university in California, western side of the United States. I have taught from this book once before, but that was years ago with the first edition. And I'm here to learn more about what's new in the second edition and also try to master some of the materials therein. So yeah, that's me, hi. <laughs> Okay, thanks. Uh, anyone else want to introduce yourself or? Hey everyone, I can go next. Um, I see the few views posted in the chat. Um, my name is Caroline. I am from South Africa um, and I've actually studied bioinformatics. And I found that the statistics and machine learning 
um, wasn't quite, we didn't go into as much depth as I would like. Um, so that's why I'm here as well, just to get a little bit deeper into the theory and things like that. But thank you for having me. It's been great so far. Okay, thanks. Uh, yeah, as mentioned, uh, I think it's said Phoebe. Phoebe also introduced herself in, via the chat, so uh, that, that's all of us. Okay, so now we can move along to to the content of the book. In this case, it's it's not really like a still machine learning on itself. It's just an introduction. So let, let's take a look at this uh, quick overview of, of the material. And so the learning objectives, let's say, recognize various types of statistical learning. Um, yeah, and describe the overall layout. I, I don't want to read the whole thing. Let's see, so what is statistical learning? Uh, what I like how, how they describe it in the book, it's like a set of tools to understand data. Uh, as I mentioned over here, it makes connections between the fields of statistics, and in this case, this area from, from mathematics. Uh, it's called functional analysis. So there's going to be quite a, an overlap of linear algebra-ish topics uh, with the statistics. But I, I don't know if they delve into it, they go deep into it in this book. Uh, but but that's the like the foundation, right? Uh, in this case, we will be focusing in two types of algorithms, and this this will be supervised learning. And these are useful if you have some, some variable, some characteristic that you want to predict, and you're going to use some set of inputs or another variables uh, so that you can make some prediction or estimation or even uh, some classification about that objective variable that you have uh, fixed. Uh, in the case, if there is really no not an objective variable to predict or to classify, then those algorithms, uh, they are labeled as unsupervised. And over here, the goal is more focused in finding relationship, relationships and structure, like grouping the data into meaningful, let's say call it cluster, meaningful groups. Now, where we actually working with this specific book. And from, from what the author discussed, it's, it seems to have become quite popular, not only due to when this book was released, but also because it's really oriented to, to, to the white community. It's not like they are not going quite deep into the technical side of machine learning. So it's really accessible to basically everyone. They, they don't even ask for a lot of programming background. They even introduce you to R. So if you have some basic understanding of math, perhaps even just secondary level. Uh, sorry, who is it? Secondary? Uh, from a school level, then it's okay. Well, I like this part. Machine learning is useful to everyone. so. Let's learn to use it responsibly because there are even courses like university university courses about ethics and AI. Uh, like uh, uh, I, an easy example would be ChatGPT, the this AI because it's I think it's getting used quite a bit for prioritizing your homework. At least that's what I'm hearing in, that is happening in universities and schools. But it also opens an interesting problem because now people are trying to figure out if some set of text, some article, for example, if it was generated or not via an AI. Now, the, the next part are the premises of this book. And uh, let's see, this is something that I mentioned in the beginning. Uh, I feel in, the, in this stage right now, uh, that the algorithms that we are going to be using, they should, know, they should not be viewed as a series of black boxes. So we are not, perhaps we are not going to go 
super deep into the theory of them, but at least I would enough understanding where I want to take from, from them. For example, we, at least useful enough to useful enough to this to decide on which one would be best, sorry, could be better or not when dealing with an actual problem in real life, some data that we are trying to comprehend. Um, let's see. No, that's about it from this section. Uh, now, along the book, we'll be going to using the letter N as a number of observations. So we can think about uh, some tabular structure, for example, like a data frame. And we could, in that way, we could interpret it as a number of rows in a data frame. And P, that is a number of features, variables, or characteristics, as a number of columns. Now, again, this is simply notation that, uh, at least from what you have already mentioned uh, from your, of your background, uh, this is basic math, not, math notation. So we are all pretty familiar with it. Uh, now, so what is this book about? It says it's a collection of modern statistical methods for modeling or making predictions from real world data. Uh, at least something good about this is that we are not only going to learn about the actual algorithms, but each chapter also has a, a lab section. And in that lab section, we are going to explore real life, real life applications of the algorithms in the chapter. Uh, as I mentioned, they are not obligatory, but uh, they are, I, I hope we all get to, to do them. Uh, well, the, the code in the book is basically using R. Um, let's see, no, this is, they are only mentioning some of the tools that we're going to be using. So the data, the data sets that are going to, to be discussed in this book, we can load them after installing this package. In the last part, this 1.11, they, they mentioned a couple examples of those data sets and what type of information do they have. So I will just move on to the next section. Uh, and, and this part I wanted to discuss a little bit more because, for example, this first link, we have already seen it, is uh, the same from Slack. But I wanted to take a look at, at this. No, wait, no, is over here. This book, The Elements of a Statistical Learning. So uh, as I mentioned uh, in a previous section, uh, it's a book oriented to white audiences. So they are not going to go super deep into the theory of machine learning. But if you do want to do that, then this book that is also uh, by the same authors, uh, they they do go uh, deeper into the theory. I wanted to show it to you because I think it's right here. No. This is over here. It's also freely available. Uh, I wanted to mention it because, for example, one may think that as we are covering some topics, perhaps some machine learning algorithm in this book, one would like to understand a little bit more of the inside out, the mathematical and statistical theory of such an algorithm. Um, they do cover that in this more technical book, but if at this from I have from what I have read a little bit on, <coughs> from both of these books. It's not like you can read them, read them in parallel because even over here <clears throat> in the, I think it's the first or second chapter. Uh, over here, in, in the third chapter of this more technical book, they, they are already mentioning uh, tools like forward and backward stepwise selection. But despite this being seen in chapter three, 
and they are they are discussed or introduced in the book that we are going to be working with uh, in chapter six. So perhaps it would it would not be convenient to read them in parallel in parallel, but to to glance them from once in a while, if you want to understand a little bit better and the tools that we are going to be learning, right? Algorithms. And also I want to do an extra comment. I think it's sorry. Yes, because it's also mentioned in the book that, well, yeah, it's an interaction using R, but there, are, because Python is so common on data science, there are already many solutions to the, to the same exercises, to the same labs. Uh, and this one, <clears throat> uh, one website where, where they have compiled many of the resources for, for learning this same book, Introduction to Statistical Learning, but via Python. Uh, I found this uh, a good compilation. I, I'm going to share it right now. You can find over here also the, the solutions to the exercises. And over here, there were a couple repos if you wanted to take a look at, at the code for the labs, for the laboratories, but in Python. So I hope that is useful to you. I, I'm going to be uh, using R and Python uh, as we learn to this book. Um, yeah, uh, and the next part that I wanted to mention is about the exercises. No, I think, I think it's over here. Wait. Uh, yeah, it's, I have to say right now, it's about the, uh, how are the exercises and the laboratories from this book. So for that, let's just look at an example. We are going to look at chapter two. Um, I would go to from chapter two to this specific page. Okay, so this is how the laboratories look. And basically, as I mentioned before, uh, brief introduction to R and then how to use packages from R to actually implement the, the algorithms that we are going to be studying. So this is how they look. And after them, after that comes the exercises section. It's over here. Every chapter has the exercise section. And, and as I mentioned, it's one part conceptual and another it's practical where well, applying. So it's really quite balanced. Let me go. Okay, now moving along, what is covered in the book? As I, as I mentioned, we are going to uh, take a look at algorithms and uh, either supervised or unsupervised. And um, at least differs the differences uh, that are coming from the second edition. So I, th I think it actually it's in a couple of chapters, even, like not just minor corrections or, or something like that. For example, they introduce deep learning, um, nice bias. I know it sounds pretty interesting. And um, perhaps a, a more uh, deep look into what, what algorithms we're going to to be learning, uh, these are some of them, right? Uh, inner regression, this, uh, it's, not, it's not only about predicting numbers, sometimes it can be classification, um, nonlinear models, like three-based methods. Um, it seems that there is a big emphasis in supervised learning, and that is uh, predicting some objective variable using another set of variables uh, and a less emphasis on unsupervised learning. Uh, as I said, it was about grouping data. Um, well, I already mentioned this. So let's go to the next section. And some examples of the problems addressed with statistical analysis. Uh, well, well, this is a these sections, 1.10 and 1.11, they're actually what is in the beginning of the book. Like they try to do a, 
a motivation for 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 why working with the tool from from this material. But let's see a couple, a couple of them are identify the risk factors for some type for some type of cancer and predictions. As I mentioned, classifying and then understanding how one variable is related to another. Uh, now, this was, this was some of the, of the data sets uh, that we can access via the, this package it's specialized for this book. Here are some of them under the, under the descriptions. For example, wage, this wage data set, uh, it, gets, it, it gets discussed in the first part of the book. And this is also, ah, and it's over here as well. They give a brief overview, for example, about uh, how a man's age, it's, it's associated to, to its yearly salary or something like that. I don't know. Uh, well, I think that's the definition of wage. So again, they're, they're simply showing that there is a trend that as, as men get older, they tend to get paid more, at least until they are 60 then there is a decline. Really, it's just the graphics from the book. And um, over here, it's more like an example of clustering. They are simply labeling with different colors what they are considering different groups of the data. So that's really it. Like there is not really much to talk about. Uh, it's not a, a chapter per se, it's, more, it's just an introduction. So now I, I will simply mention what, uh, about the, the, how do you call it? The, present, the presentation of the meetings. Over here in the, in the Slack channel, we can access uh, the sheet for who is going to present. And in this case, I have presented this introduction, but I have also uh, signed myself up to present the following meeting that now we, we actually get to discuss, like, let's, let's say the actual content of the book. But yeah, I think we're only four, so uh, I hope that, that that is not quite a limitation in, in the number of presenters that we are going to have. Because if no one can do it, then I will have to, to step up as a facilitator of this cohort. But only a last note, I mentioned that, as you can see right here, right? The meetings are divided into theory and then the exercise part. And in such a way for every chapter. But as I mentioned, it could happen, right, that we don't get to cover the full material of a chapter in one meeting. So perhaps in the next one, it will have to be a theory and, and practice. But it doesn't have to, to be also the same presenter for the exercise meeting, as you can see over here, and the, and, the, and the theory meeting. So in this case, right, I am presenting the theory of this chapter, but another person can, can present this. So, if there is if if there is anyone who wants to already sign up to present the ex exercises part of this of this cohort, then you can do. If not, it's okay. I'll I'll have to do it, but I I don't like I I want that there that there is variety. Um, there is someone new, and there is say. Hello. Hi, sorry. I, I'm sorry I'm late. Uh, it's okay. Actually, uh, we just finished uh, looking at the content for, for this meeting. It was quite short, so I was simply explaining that uh, in this sheet that you can access via that lack of this cohort, sorry, oh, sorry, of this booklet, 
Uh, you can sign up if you want to uh, which which chapter to present um, either the theory of, of the exercise or something. Uh, now, because you only just arrived there, say, uh, we have already presented ourselves. Uh, we mentioned that uh, well, our name, uh, why are we interested in this book and what we hope to gain from it. Uh, if you would like, uh, would you like to present, tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Um, I, I just joined um, this, uh, the Slack channel. And so I, I was interested in learning more about, um, you know, machine learning. And um, I'm finishing up a, a master's degree in biomedical informatics this spring. But I feel like I could use some more training in, in machine learning. So that's why, I, and, and in R in general. Uh, my background is in SAS programming. So that's why I wanted to join this group. Well, so then we have two people who work in, in the informatics in this book club. That, that's pretty good. Uh, now, as I said, that's really it. We already look at the introduction. Uh, perhaps next week, next week you can sign up someone who wants to present. Uh, but if there is no questions or comments, then we can just simply end the meeting right now. Is there any comment, any question? Okay, well, uh, thanks for the, the feedback. Uh, thank you too for, for signing up. Uh, and, and that's really it. Uh, we, I'll see you next week. So I'll be ending the presentation. Bye, thanks.